Hi, I'm Chuck Swindoll. Back in the mid-1990s, I was led to begin a series of books on many of the great lives in the Bible. Uh, that series came to be known as the Great Lives series, and many of you will remember we've done eight of them, and right now we're finishing our ninth one. In fact, it's now done. It's on the life of Jesus Christ. When you do a series on great lives, you certainly cannot overlook the greatest life of all, and that's Jesus Christ. And so, as I thought about the series, it seemed to make good sense that the series should climax with this life of Jesus. It means a lot to me to provide that book because it puts in perspective all other lives, because his is, is that profile along which we measure all of life and therefore it's sort of the climax to the series. Now in a series like this, you're dealing with life as it really is, and you're seeing people as they really are. So when you come to the life of Jesus, you have a life, while it's greater than all others, it is a life that was marked by suffering, by not only deity, divinity, but also humanity, and the great pressures that he went through. So in that sense, his life is like all of our lives, in that he understands what we go through because he went through them as well. When I undertook the writing of this book, I realized that we need a book that surveys the whole life, not just when he was born as a baby in the manger at Bethlehem, but to go back even before that to present him as the second member of the Trinity, very God in the presence of the Godhead, a part of the Godhead. So this book covers the full spectrum before his birth, at his birth, his childhood. It takes us into his early ministry, the length of his ministry, and then ultimately the climax where he was, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Of course, it includes his resurrection on into his departure from this earth and the promise of his coming. It covers the whole waterfront of the life of Jesus. While there have been great lives, great lives included in the scriptures as well as lives since then, when you come to the life of Jesus, you have one great impression that stands out. He alone is Lord. He alone is the Son of God. He alone is the one worthy of our worship. He alone is to be the object of our praise. The main message of this book is that you come away with the realization that He and He alone is the Lord of our lives. And so when thinking through this series, which will ultimately be these nine volumes, it seemed to make sense that the climax of the, of the series would be the life of Jesus. Uh, the greatest life of all makes sense, doesn't it? Sort of the finale to the whole series. And so when you read this series, beginning with David all the way through to the life of Jesus, you will have sort of a survey of life as it really is, climaxing with the greatest life of all, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ.